morning, hi, how are you? This is Austin Thompson with the Entrepreneurship On Location Spotlight um, interview. I am here with Audrey Bell Kearney um, with uh, her marketing business and she's all about noise, she's all about you know, making sure that small business owners and entrepreneurs are making enough noise to make sure that they are attracting the attention that they need in the marketplace, right? And in marketing, it's all about the customers, your clients, and the market knowing that you exist. Because if no one knows you exist, they can't do business with you, right? So we're gonna talk about marketing. We're gonna get into a discussion about noise and what noise is, what is noise? How do you make noise, right? Uh, we're gonna define that and we're going to let our entrepreneurs know how they can make the noise they need to, to attract the attention in the marketplace. Audrey Bell Kearney, how you doing? I'm good, and you? Thank you so much for having me. All right, great. I'm so glad that we, we finally got to hook up and do this interview. Uh, I know that you are the marketing authority, the marketing extraordinaire. You know, you are the, the go-to person for um, entrepreneurs, elected officials, candidates who are running for office, anybody who needs a presence in the marketplace, to whomever they are targeting, you are the key person thank you, that thank they come you. to. Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you talking about somebody else for a second. <laughs> oh, no, man. Well, we, we want, before we get started, I know a little bit about Audrey Bell Kern. Who's, who's Audrey Bell Kern? So Audrey is a mom, a wife, grandmother, sister, a good friend, an entrepreneur with Die Hard, a podcaster, um, a consultant, all of those great author, inventor, I'm all of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm all of those awesome. Mm -hmm. I can go on, but I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> so you're multifaceted. You're a wife, you're a mother, you, you're a professional woman, an entrepreneur, you are a change maker, a visionary, so you're doing all of these things. I am, you know, I love them all, mm -hmm. so I can't complain, and I don't complain. Uh -huh. um, I love what I do. I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I started out what I call my first real business. I'm an inventor. I invented the first plus-size fashion doll. Oh, okay. There were no fashion dolls on the market, uh -huh. and I had this idea, this big idea in, in 1999, and... Um, I talked to one of my friends who was a doll collector that I did. I didn't even know she was a doll collector. Right, and right. And I said to her, have you ever seen a, I call it, I said, have you seen a fat fashion doll? And she was like, no. She says, all I want to know is can I be the vice president? <laughs> and I said, sure. And we hit the ground running. And so right. we ran that company um, for five years. Uh -huh. Just the idea in my head. Mm -hmm. I went to somebody who could draw because I couldn't draw. Right, right. I found somebody who could actually draw out what was in my head. They drew it out. Then I found somebody who could actually take that and put it into clay. Exactly. And they took it and put it into clay. And then I found this, the same lady put it into wax. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Toy Fair, mm -hmm. found the manufacturer, sent my wax to Toy Fair to, to China. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong never, have never set foot on, ground, on China's ground. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Sent my wax over to China. They sent me back vinyl. And I had a doctor. And you had a dog company. Dog company. So you, you said you're an inventor, mom, wife. I mean, all these things. You know, where do you find time to relax? Well, you know, it's been so long. I've, I've learned how to put processes in place so it allowed me to have some <clears throat> balance in a life. Right. Um, in the beginning, I did everything. Like my partner and I, we did everything. She did one thing. Our husbands had to just, they knew what we were doing, so they didn't give us any flack. Thank <laughs> God for good husbands. <laughs> and, um, and we did everything. But over the years, you know, with so many um, great resources out there right. and so many extraordinary tools, it helps me keep everything um, in line and in order. Mm -hmm. And so I and, and I do only the things I love. Man. Right. I don't chase money. Right. Right. <laughs> you let money chase you. I let money chase me. Uh -huh. There was a time where I was a single mother when I started doing this company. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was I was a single mom, and I met my husband. And I said to my husband, I said, I don't think you want to talk to me. <laughs> and he said, Why? I said, Because I'm a single mother. I'm uh -huh. broke. Trying to run this business with no money. I don't mm -hmm. like to cook. I hate grocery shopping. I ran it down to him. I was like, I gotta be honest. So you prepared him. You I prepared him. him. And he uh -huh. said to me, I grew up with mothers and grandmothers and sisters, which he had three sisters. Right. And he, his mom was single, and, he, and his grandmother. They all lived in one house. Mm -hmm. So he didn't mind cooking, and he doesn't mind doing the laundry. He still do these things today. Right. We've right. Been together twenty years, and um. That's great. Twenty-two years. Twenty-two, 22 years. 22 wow. Years That's great. Together. And 
he still doesn't. I do some now. Mm -hmm. I used to, back then I didn't have time, but now I do do those things. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to make time for for family. Mm -hmm. That's really important. My family's really important. And I realized I don't do things that I don't like to do. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you get, a, you get to a point in your life where you try to streamline all the things that you're doing and you know when you're younger you know you're, you're trying to you're, you're, you're trying to take over the world right you're trying to do everything under the sun and then you get to a certain point in your life you're like you know what i could be more efficient if i just remove some of these things trim the fat yep. and just stick to these you know rudimentary things that i'm doing in my life yes and that's, you know? that's true and we have so many great resources and tools out there till it helps you do that. Exactly. Before when I started a long time ago, uh -huh. you didn't have Slack and you didn't have Asana and Asana and you didn't mm -hmm. have all these buffer and exactly. you know, all of these you know hoop suites and all these things. Yes. That you yes. just put stuff on automatic pocket and it just works. It just works so for you. It's a lot different. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Noise Media Network. We we we, we learned a little bit about you. So now we're going to transition into Noise Media Network. This is the company you created. And this is the, the company you created to help small business owners and help entrepreneurs make the noise that they need to get the attention. Okay. Right? All right. Right. So you want me to give me the backstory? Give me the backstory. Give us the backstory. The backstory is <laughs> when I did the doll company, uh -huh. I had been written up in Hard and Soul mm -hmm. magazine. Mm -hmm. And I went into a print shop to make some copies because I was so excited mm -hmm. because we were written up in a national magazine. So we were so excited. I went into a print shop. When I went inside the print shop, the guy had a, a, a post on the wall mm -hmm. saying he was going to start a newspaper. Right. And I was like, so does does anybody write entrepreneurship articles for the newspaper? Because hmm. now I'm an entrepreneur. Right. I'm an right. Entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. <laughs> so I could write about that because I've right. done that thing. Right. And he said, no, you want to write it. And I said, sure. Uh -huh. So I became the entrepreneur editor for that newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I and I was writing the newspaper. I was editing, doing my little section every, every it was mm -hmm. weekly, mm -hmm. every week. And after two years, um, I had a friend who came in and saw the newspaper. He was like, right. oh, that's pretty cool. So he started a newspaper. Ah, And I'm okay. thinking, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to. So you started a newspaper too? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. So I thought about it for a while. And then I decided to start a newspaper. Wow. <laughs> so I launched a newspaper called Women in Business Today. In business. Wow. So I started the newspaper. And someone picked up the newspaper who worked at a radio station. Uh -huh. When they picked up the newspaper, the guy asked me would I be on his show. Mm -hmm. And I was like, absolutely. He never turned on the opportunity to talk. And so I went to the studio, and it was like a real radio studio. I'm like, yes. It's right. one radio. He liked me so much, he asked me to co-host the show. Oh, wow. Nice. So I became his co-host. And then I liked it so much, I'm like, I like this. Mm -hmm. But then something happened. I had to move to North Carolina because mm -hmm. my husband works in pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. and they had lost the contract to one of the medicines that they made. Uh -huh. Not the contract, the patent mm -hmm. to one of the medicines that they made. So we moved to North Carolina to research Triangle mm -hmm. area because that's where all the pharmaceutical companies were. Oh yeah, RTP. <laughs> so I was happening to be driving down a street in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. oh, I lived Mountain. in Spring Hills, <laughs> riding in Rocky Mountain, and I saw a TV station, mm -hmm. and I was like. Pitch my radio show to the TV network. Ah. So I did a U, went around the other side of the road and pitched them the same show that I had on radio. Mm -hmm. I pitched it as a TV show. Ah, okay. The station manager loved it and picked it up. Wow. And I was like, holy crap, I'm about to do a TV spot. I started producing the show, did it for two years. Uh -huh. Got homesick, moved back to Jersey, uh -huh. and stayed in Jersey. When I got back to Jersey, um, I went back on radio again. Uh -huh. And I stayed on radio for another two years. And just love that space. And then um, the station was an FM station, an AM station. Mm -hmm. They lost their license. You know what? Okay. Right around yeah. that time, podcasting started to kick off. I see. But it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a hobby. Yeah. And so yeah. I would do. I would go live every Tuesday at nine o'clock. My partner and I, because Georgia is my partner. She's been my partner forever. Mm -hmm. We would go live. We did a show called Business of the Breakfast. I see. And I, I did. We did about two hundred and fifteen episodes. Oh wow. Okay. No money yet. Yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is not paying the bills. I need mm -hmm. to make some money. And I became a consultant with uh, Rutgers Small Business Development Center. I see. And um, did that for some time, and then we moved to Georgia. Mm -hmm. 2013. I was born in Georgia, but I was raised okay. in Jersey. Okay. Moved to Georgia in 2013, and when I moved to Georgia, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? Uh -huh. I know anybody, and I, I kind of leaned on my love of media, uh -huh. and I started podcasting again. Okay. Went to a film festival, and um, I've been an author for a long time. I've been 
co-authored my first book in 1998. Mm-hmm. I've been author for a long time. Right. Went to a black film festival. Mm-hmm. I got there, you know, I see all these amazing filmmakers, they had made all this great content, and there was a distributor there, and the distributor said to them, we can get you in all these places, but you won't see any money from your work for like 15 years. Wow. And I'm like, so I'm sitting there like 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what they didn't know, is that I had did a documentary about myself. Right. It was sitting on Amazon. Ah. Making money every year, and it was Mm -hmm. horrible. Awesome. It was a Harper documentary yeah, because yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I, mean, right. I got a guy who was just out of school. I mean, it wasn't horrible, horrible, but yeah. compared to what Not horrible enough for Amazon to pick it up, right? Okay, so it's yeah. sitting on Amazon <laughs> making money. I was charging $27. Right. And I'm thinking, he's telling these people they won't make any money. Uh-huh. And they were like running up there, like, take my CD, take my DVD, take it. And I'm like, that's crazy. Uh-huh. So on my way back home, that was in Decatur. On my way back home, I was like, okay. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. I know that's not true. Right. I know you can put a DVD on Amazon and have mass distribution. Exactly. So I'm thinking, like, what am I going to do? And God said to me, start an internet TV company. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. And I kind of slept on it for a minute. <clears throat> and I thought about it. And I said, okay, well, let me talk to all my women in business friends. Okay. Because we got this TV thing going on. So I went to. I went to all my business friends. Right. Like, Listen, I'm starting this internet TV thing, you guys should get on board. Yeah. Austin, I got crickets. Mm-hmm. People like, I gotta get in front of the camp. I'm like, yeah, you wanna be on TV. Yeah. They did not want to do that. Mm-hmm. They just said, we don't want to be on camera. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound. I got all of these things. So I said to the Lord, Listen, you gave me this other big idea. What am mm-hmm. I supposed to do with this one? Exactly. He said, Reach out to people that want to be on TV. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh. So I did a casting call. Mm-hmm. There was a magazine in New York called Backstage. Mm-hmm. I was very familiar with that magazine because I had used it before. Right. <clears throat> so I ran an ad in Backstage, and I was looking for women who wanted to be mm-hmm. host their own show. Three hundred women applied. Wow. Three hundred women. Mm-hmm. They had certain things they had to submit to us, and mm-hmm. half of them didn't do that. So mm-hmm. thirty-nine people actually gave us everything we needed out of that three hundred. Mm-hmm. And out of that thirty-nine, we brought on nineteen. Okay. And they started producing content for our new TV network called mm-hmm. HerTube. Mm-hmm. And so HerTube was born. And um, I loved it, but I couldn't get people to wrap their head around it. Mm-hmm. I was too soon. I, okay. I've always been too soon. But ahead of the game. Always. Even curve. with the doll. <laughs> even with the doll, Austin. We were ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. Nobody was thinking about making a plus size fashion. Right. And if they were, they didn't take the steps. Uh-huh. We just took the steps. They just saved my Barbie. I <laughs> <laughs> got plus size fashion dolls everywhere. Yeah. So I was ahead. Of, we were ahead of our time again, but we launched anyway. Mm-hmm. And these women were so excited because they if they had a Roku device in their house. Mm-hmm. You know, Roku is a streaming device. They could see themselves on TV, mm-hmm. and they was excited about that. They were excited, and so um, I did that for five years, and then I just kind of left it on all the power. Like mm-hmm. I don't touch it anymore. We have 103,000 subscribers on Roku. Oh wow, on that nice. channel. It's, I, I would get a lot of flack from the guys. And mm-hmm. This is how noise was going. Uh-huh. I would get a lot of flack from the guys. Like, what about us? So I was like, I want to do this again. But this time I want it to be bigger. Mm-hmm. And I want to include the fellas. Mm-hmm. So I want noise. Mm-hmm. And so noise is internet TV, mobile apps, mm-hmm. as well as podcasting. Okay. That's great. Because, <laughs> you know, in, in marketing, we, we, we talk about, you know, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and and uh, Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and all of these different social media platforms. And that's like one aspect of it, mm-hmm. you know? And this is why I, I definitely wanted to have this interview with you because um, our, our small business owners need to know that there are, there are a multitude of, of areas in which they can promote themselves and promote their business. And we're gonna come to a, a point in this interview where we talk about telling the story, right? So what type of businesses do you work with? And and, and I know you, you work with small businesses and you work with political candidates. I well, talk a little bit about that. So what was interesting, I started out working with small business entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. right? And then I started working with one nonprofit organization. Mm-hmm. And that nonprofit told another nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And then that nonprofit told another nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So it started to look like I was working mostly nonprofits, which mm-hmm. I do, mm-hmm. which is just weird. But that was all word of mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> I interviewed someone who was running for political office mm-hmm. here right here where we are today mm-hmm. he told somebody and I interviewed that, that person <laughs> then that person heard about that person and they came on my show and so I, I, want, I want to stop you there yes. I want our listeners to know word of mouth 
Word of mouth. Word of mouth. You see, when you have a reputation and a brand, and, and your, your, your reputation precedes you, people are out there talking about you. You don't even know about it. So that when you when you come to that individual, you approach that individual now, they've already heard about you. You know, so that's great. That when you do great work, people know about it. I have a client, Austin. She uh -huh. is amazing. I met her. We were at a, um, I'm a financial advisor. Most mm -hmm. people don't know that because I don't talk about it because mm -hmm. I'm always talking about media because mm -hmm. that's what I love. Yeah. <clears throat> but we were renewing our license. And we were at our license and training because we had to renew because every four years you got to renew your license. Mm -hmm. So we were renewing our license. I met her and she was saying, what do you do? I said, well, obviously I ain't doing this, but I'm renewing mm -hmm. my license. I'm a, you know, I do podcasting. Oh, I want to do that. So she was a pastor. Uh -huh. She loved what I, I taught her how to start a podcast. Uh -huh. She loved me so much. She brought all of her, non her friends to her house, mm -hmm. bought some food, and mm -hmm. invited me to come and speak to them. I see. And two of them became uh, clients. Uh -huh. This was at her house. I had to drive to Riverdale from Lawrenceville. Mm -hmm. But that's because I did good work for her. And she's right. still a client to this day. Mm -hmm. Like one of my best clients. So mm -hmm. word of mouth is definitely powerful. Mm -hmm. um, because when people know that you do good work, and they refer you to somebody, that's like a, a co-signing saying, okay, I work with this yes. person, I can, I trust them, you can trust them too. Yes, yes. So that's the point. And, it, and it, in my consulting, this is what I always try to express and emphasize, the reputation you build is, is golden, you know, because when you do great work and you, you, you're, you you know, you, you satisfy a client and a customer to the point where they just start bragging about you. <laughs> they just start bragging about you to their friends and their colleagues, and their friends and colleagues now want to do work with you. Right. you know? And what's interesting about that, right, all of her friends were around the same age. Gotcha. They're in the same industry. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and, and so the reason she loved me was because I was patient, mm. and that was big for them. And so all of them say the same. Mm -hmm. all of they say this thing, oh my god thank you for being patient with me yeah that's because for me and, and I and I, I have to credit my mom for this because um my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer 2010 oh, okay. okay and she she got diagnosed again in 2012 okay. she beat it both times mm -hmm. and but it, it damaged her the chemo and the radiation damaged oh. her the joints and mm -hmm. so she wasn't mobile anymore like she used to be she walked with a walker after uh -huh. that but we still had her yeah. She, was, she was glad to be with us. And so for 10 years, I took care of my mom. Mm -hmm. Whatever she needed, all she had to do was ask me. Mm -hmm. And it taught me patience. But I love my mom, so I want you to do anything for their mom. Exactly. Well, exactly. let me say this, I would. Mm -hmm. And so, and my mom was always very conscious. Like, I don't, I don't want to bother you. And I would mm -hmm. say to her, you're not bothering me. Just tell me what you need. Tell me what time you got to be there. And I'll make it happen. Right. This is what I did for 10 straight years. And uh, But I lost the last year to COVID. Okay. Sorry but, to hear that. Me taking yeah. care of her taught me patience. Mm -hmm. It taught me empathy. It taught me how to slow down. Right. So when I when these people meet me, I know these things because I took care of my mom. Mm -hmm. And my mom used to say to me all the time, "You're like my rock." Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, "No, you're my rock." Right. And we was we were each other's rock, you know. Right. So <clears throat> I think people, my clients, like me because I don't mind holding their hands. Right. I don't mind explaining to them two or three times. Mm -hmm. You know. Some of them I was like, you know what, it would just be quicker for me to do it. Mm -hmm. It's like right. that person. Yeah, you know? okay. I okay. have friends who have said to me, I don't want startups. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. You got to do too much for them. Mm -hmm. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, well, who's going to help them? Microsoft was a startup. <laughs> Dell was a startup. Right. You know, you've got to start from, you got to start from ground zero. Yes. Before you start to grow and scale. Yeah. You know, so... And, and that's a lucrative area, dealing with startups and, and early stage businesses in the life cycle because they need your help, they need the hand holding. And if you can create that for them, if you can provide that to them, then you're, what, what you're doing is sort of like differentiating yourself from the competitors because you're offering that, let me help you step by step, let me take you by the hand and guide you, which a lot of small businesses need, right? I think what I've learned though, because um, there's people who say I want to start a business, right? right? They're not ready. They're not. Yeah, yeah. And it took me a long time, kind of, to figure out. Okay, well, how do I work with these people? Well, I let them know this is how much it's going to require you mm -hmm. to invest in yourself and your business. If you're not ready to make that investment, you're not ready. You're not ready. So I can't help you because you're not going to do any of the things that I'm telling you to do. Because exactly. You're not ready to make that that investment. Whether exactly. it be working with me, whether it be setting up this marketing plan, getting mm -hmm. on this platform, yep. you have to be ready. Yeah. And so, 
I explain it to them. And the ones that are ready, I'm ready. And the ones that aren't, so I'll be back when I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. But it took me a minute. So I, I found that, and I, and I knew why a lot of my friends would not work with mm-hmm. like brand new entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. was because they, the clients that they were working with, they weren't ready. Right. And so they wanted to charge thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And I'm not knocking that, because that's, the, that's their fees. And that's they deserve right. it. Exactly. Their expertise. Exactly. But these people didn't understand, like you say, I want to start a business. You got to be ready for that. Mm-hmm. And it comes with a lot, not just money investment, but your time. Mm-hmm. time I had a client yeah. in North Carolina. I was living in, I was in Jersey. And she paid me. Mm-hmm. She paid me to coach her. But she wasn't time ready. Right. She could financially afford me. Right. But she wasn't time ready. So every time we would come back to our next session, I would say to her, what did you do? Exactly. She hadn't done anything. Mm-hmm. And so I got to the point where I said, look. You're wasting my time and your money. Mm -hmm. So you need to figure out what you really want to do. Now, some people won't do that. They won't. Mm -hmm. They won't throw away money. They'll keep taking money. (laughs) Me personally, it's a waste of time. I don't feed. I don't get any. I don't feed off of that. I feed Mm -hmm. off of progression. Progression. What are you doing? Yes. How you? I feed off of that. So if I'm not getting that, I probably don't want to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she came back and instead of her saying I'm quitting, she said she was trying to make a stuffed animal. Mm So because I had been in the manufacturing business and I knew how to manufacture and get stuff done overseas, that's what I was helping her do. Mm-hmm. She came back after about two months of work with me and said, well, I just decided to close the company down because my mom saw the whatever, I forgot what it was. I'm going to say it was an elephant. Mm-hmm. It was a purple elephant. Mm-hmm. And she said her mom told her it was evil. <laughs> okay. And I said, okay, well, okay. good luck. Because uh-huh. that's what I can say. Right. So she really wasn't ready. Right. Yeah, and you have to assess that, you know, when mm-hmm. folks call you and they say, hey, I want to start a business, I need XYZ done, I need to talk to you about XYZ. Number one, as a consultant um, or as someone in, in, the, in, in, the, in the space where you're offering a service, you have to determine if you're going to charge for that conversation. Because mm-hmm. somebody can hold your time, hold you for two hours, you know, whatever length of time, and then never do any business with you. That's right. And they get information from you. So you have to determine if you're going to charge for your time, whether it's a half hour, whether it's 20 minutes, whether it's an hour, whatever. Make sure you charge for your time. Because what a lot of folks try to do is they hold you they, they, they hold you in conversation and they never follow up to do business with you. So you you, you got to really be careful of that, you know. And, and this is really great, Avi. And I want to, what, what are the necessary steps? Like, I come to you, I say, um, Ms. Audrey, I, I would like to invest in some marketing initiatives for my business. I think I need to, to, to get my business, uh, to, take it, to take it to another level, I need more visibility, I, I need to reach out to the market, and what, what are the necessary steps you take? So the first thing we want to do is find out more about your business. Mm -hmm. We want to find out what your business are, what you're trying to accomplish, Mm -hmm. and who you want to talk to. Here's a a tricky part about that. A lot of times people don't know who they want to talk to. Mm -hmm. I used to struggle with that all the time. Speak to your target audience. I'm like, well, how do I know who that is? Mm -hmm. My target audience started to find me. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I just kept doing what I do. And come to find out it's nonprofits and political candidates. And that was because I kept talking to people because I didn't know how to find it. Nobody could tell me. This is a. This is how you find your target audience. It wasn't exactly. until someone said to me, Audrey, who do you want to work with?" Right. And I said, "What do you mean? Like the target audience are the people that you want to work with?" Exactly. Because you don't want to work with everybody. Right. So who do you want to work with? And I still didn't know who I want to work with. Right. But they found me. Mm-hmm. Right. Now I know who they are. Mm-hmm. But until that person said to me, because a lot of people are struggling, like, "Well, I need to talk to my target audience. I don't even know how to find that person." Exactly. I don't know what my avatar looks like because I don't know who they are. Right. I don't go where they shop at. Well, I don't even know who they are, so yeah. I don't go they shop at. So, yeah. the person said to me, "Your target audience is who you want to who you want to help." Exactly. Or who you want to sell to. Who you want yeah. to sell to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, it's taken me 10 years. It was about 10, I was 10 mm-hmm. years in when I found that mm-hmm. out. So the first thing is find out who you want to talk to. That's right. the first thing. Right. And then kind of look at what you want to do because there are so many ways to market your business. Mm-hmm. Right? So, and, and you can't do them all at one time mm-hmm. unless you have a huge budget and a nice staff. Right. If you are a solopreneur, <laughs> right. trying to do all of that stuff at one time, it's going to burn you completely out. Yes, and nothing is going to get done at, at perfection level. It won't because yes, you're going to be here, you'll be there. So you want to make sure that you pick some avenues. Like for me, I when I first started, PR was big to me. Mm-hmm. We didn't have any money. PR, public relations. Public relations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't have any cash. Uh-huh. 
but we could write a, I could write a press release. Right. And I did. Right. And because I knew how to write press releases, we were written up in all kinds of magazines, all mm. kinds of TVs. That was free. Mm-hmm. I didn't pay nobody. Right. I just put them out myself. Right. I went to Barnes and Noble. I picked out twenty magazines that mm-hmm. I wanted to be in. Mm-hmm. Wrote the press release, sent the press release out. Got picked up by Hard and Soul magazine. Right. And then I get we kept getting picked up after that. Mm-hmm. I remember one night it was midnight, Austin, and someone um, sent me an email and said, "Hey." Love the article about you. Mm-hmm. You're in the magazine with Tate Diggs on the front. Right. It was midnight in Jersey. Uh-huh. I jumped up. I said to my husband, I said, somebody just said we're in, in um, the magazine with Tate Diggs on the front. I'm like, what? I get up. I go to the grocery store. We have a 24-hour grocery store in Jersey called mm-hmm. Pathmark. Oh, go to Pathmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open the magazine. There we were. Tate Diggs is on the front. There we are. Uh-huh. And this person was in California. Nice. So but that, because, that was because I knew we didn't have money. Mm-hmm. And I knew that we needed to make sure people knew who we were. Right. So you got to pick the platform that's going to suit you where you are. Mm-hmm. Right. You got to start from where you are. It may be podcasting. It may not be podcasting. Mm-hmm. It may be video. Mm-hmm. You know, you may say, you know what, I want to do Instagram. Why you want to do Instagram? Because I sell a lot of stuff. Exactly. So Instagram may be the platform for you. Right. Um, you may say, you know what, I want to do blogging. Well, you set up a blog and then you connect yourself to Pinterest. Mm-hmm. Why? Because Pinterest help bloggers grow. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. So you just got to know where where to start, and that's based on what you're trying to accomplish. Right. And these are the little intricate things that uh, the average entrepreneur just doesn't know. Right. And this is one of the reasons why uh, when Miss Harvey uh, spoke about um, you know being ready mm-hmm. and understanding all of the things you need in order to at least launch successfully, right, and have a successful startup. These are little intricate things that a consultant can, can advise you on that you don't know, right? And um, podcasting is is another platform that, that you're you you know you're 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 on and you're developing that or you have developed it. How how successful has podcasting been for you? And how successful would post, would, would podcasting be for a small business owner working with you? Podcasting has been hugely successful mm-hmm. for me. That's why at the at the um, right around the third the third uh, the first the beginning of the first quarter mm-hmm. this year, I decided to put most of my focus just on podcasting mm-hmm. because that's the one thing that I love the most. Mm-hmm. Right, I host about three or four podcasts weekly, mm-hmm. um, and it has opened up a lot of doors. I've been able to get lucrative contracts because mm-hmm. of it. Okay. Um, I speak at podcast conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm building a whole network of podcasts. Right, right. And so I looked at the network and I said, you know what? There are people out there who just want to do they do. They're mm-hmm. artists. But I consider podcasters artists because this is their art. This mm-hmm. is what they do. And a lot of them don't want to do the business side. Right, exactly. And I know what I've been doing. I've been doing this since 2009. Mm-hmm. So I've seen the industry grow. Right. I stay on top of everything because I speak at conferences right. and I coach people on podcasting. Mm-hmm. But I said, you know what? I know that there are people out there who don't want to do all the stuff that I do because mm-hmm. I'm fanatical about mine. Mm-hmm. Right? They don't want to be fanatical. Right. So I decided to launch the network, give them an opportunity to be on my network, and then we manage we manage like marketing mm-hmm. and we manage and making sure the app is up mm-hmm. so they have an app for their podcast they right. pay one fee and now you get all this stuff right and we give you a lot so um this is a great space to be in and what i will say to anybody who's thinking about it you just gotta be consistent mm-hmm. and you have to be committed because that's what's going to make your podcast stand out right now if you think you're going to get rich from it right away you're not so yeah. let me just say that i know a lot of you have heard of joe rogan and um i'm your daddy yeah, mm-hmm. those are big deals, right? Yeah. But you have to be the right person at the right time. Joe Rogan didn't just start our podcast. He was already in, in entertainment. Right, exactly. Right, and he's been podcasting for 15, 16 years. Mm-hmm. You know. Before um, it was popular. Before, before, right, before, before it was popular. popular. <laughs> in his basement, nothing looks, nothing looks different. If you look at his video, I was like, when he got that $100 million on mm-hmm. Spotify, I was like, what is he talking about? Mm-hmm. When I went to the look, he was just talking to regular people. Yeah. yeah. Like all kinds of people. Like yeah. a psychic one day, you know, a devil worshiper the next day, a, yeah. bi- a Bible company the next day. He was talking to anybody. Because look how long Howard Stern yes. has been, you know, doing similar podcasting, yeah. right? Yeah. The Howard Stern Show is over 30 years, That's right. right? And, you know, so, it's, so podcasting is not anything new. Nope. You know, so a lot of folks are now getting into it and finding it as a as an optional means to getting them getting themselves more notice, more visibility, and getting out there in in, 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 in podcast field. But it's you know, but it's great because you see so many people doing it. You know, that's a lot of people doing it, Austin. But here's the thing: 
podcasts compared to YouTube is still very small. Mm -hmm. Like there are three billion YouTube channels. Yes. There are only one point nine million podcasters. Mm -hmm. And out of that one point nine million, only about half of those are active. Mm -hmm. And when I say active, that means that they're producing at least one episode a week. Yeah. So we still have a lot of space to grow. Yes. I think what I what I find funny is that People will set up a YouTube channel. They uh -huh. will set up a podcast. I see. And I'm saying to myself, why not? Mm -hmm. Because it's easier to get into, mm -hmm. right? Um, you don't have to be in front of the camera if you don't like to be. Right. And you get global distribution. Mm -hmm. One of my podcasts, when I do four days a week, Good Morning Gwinnett, which is a hyper-local podcast about Gwinnett County. Mm -hmm. I go live four days a week. It's the number one hyper-local podcast in Georgia. Right. Number three on news in Australia. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So... You can go global instantly. Uh -huh. Now, here's the thing about that. If you have a product or a service, put a commercial in front of your podcast. Mm -hmm. And so people know this podcast is made possible by Noah's Podcast Network to support exactly. the podcast. Go to Noah's Podcast Network. Mm -hmm. That's at the beginning. Right. Or in the middle, at the end. So it's still a very um, a very good place to be. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't started, it's still time to start. It's exactly. not too late. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and as business owners, we... You know, we know the need, we understand the need to market. What's most effective? Because we get email marketing, you have social media, we have television if you can afford it, you have radio if you can afford it, um, you know, video, TikTok again. You see a lot of um, entrepreneurs uh, turning to TikTok, you see a lot of entrepreneurs turning to YouTube to produce videos. In, 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 in respect to the most effective path, to gaining visibility and attracting your market. Where do you think um, business owners should invest their money? It really depends on the business. Uh -huh. So, prime example, if you are a person and you sell products, mm -hmm. Instagram may be the best platform to you. Exactly. Okay. Because Instagram is all about e-commerce, mm -hmm. right? It may not be podcasting. Mm -hmm. Because they can't visually see what you're selling. Exactly. If you are selling a product, Etsy may be the best platform mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it's a play, it's an e-commerce platform. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon has a program that a lot of people don't know about. It's called Amazon Influencer. Mm -hmm. I'm an Amazon mm -hmm. Influencer. Mm -hmm. Now, is that the best platform for me? Right. Yes. Right. Because I have a store on Amazon. Right. Right. So that's a good platform for me. Exactly. So you got to know what you're selling and where your audience are. So once you discover Okay, this is the person I'm trying to work with. Mm -hmm. If you know you're trying to work with millennials, you know, between the ages of 25, well, that's 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 Gen Xers, I think. Mm -hmm. But 20, let's say 27 to 40, right. if that's millennials, like they're on Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're trying to get like instant influence, go to TikTok mm -hmm. because it takes no time for something to go viral on TikTok. Right. But you as gotta, opposed to YouTube. As, as opposed to YouTube, to YouTube right. and Instagram. Right. My nephew was a. Um, He's a football coach. He's a college football coach. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, you need to get on TikTok. And I was like, man, I don't have no desire to get on TikTok. What am I going to put on TikTok? Because mm -hmm. everybody on TikTok, I see is dancing. Right, I got right. a bad knee. I, exactly. can't, I can't dance. Exactly. Right? And so I said to him, well, are you doing things on TikTok? He said, I don't have time, my <laughs> So you really need to know, you know, where you're already. Like, once you just discover who your avatar is or who you want to work with, mm -hmm. where are they? Mm -hmm. My people are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I don't spend a whole lot of time on no platforms other than LinkedIn. Other than LinkedIn. So my, my, my podcasts are syndicated to LinkedIn and all these other places, but the way I spend my time, I spend it on LinkedIn. Right, right. And and you, you made an important point because when TikTok first came on the scene, when folks first started to discover this phenomenon as TikTok, you saw a lot of people doing some crazy things. Yeah. Right? They're dancing and they're, they're doing all these, you know, uh, Things to entertain people. So I, I'm, I'm assuming a small business owner didn't really take it seriously. Right. Didn't say, well, this is the platform for me, right. you know. But now, as it has evolved and is evolving a bit more, you start seeing people now gravitating to TikTok to promote their business, you know, which is great. It's you know? amazing, Austin. I was, on a, I was interviewed last week, was last week, uh -huh. on a platform called Wisdom. Mm -hmm. A very a lovely platform. Mm -hmm. It's a social, a social audio platform, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and they got they got thousands of people. Too. Right. And I was like, this is great, but when am I going to have time to do that? Exactly. Right. Is my audience on there? It's a great platform, and mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure out how to work it in because <clears throat> it is part of my audio my audio business plan. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm like, how am I going to work that in? There's another one called Fan Base. Okay, I've heard of that, yeah. Look at Fan Base, man. Mm -hmm. This is a great platform. Right. I would think that people would be buzzing all the time about Fan Base, mm -hmm. but it's not. Uh -huh. It's not getting the buzz. Now, what I liked about it mm -hmm. was that when you go there, if someone want to, I think they can like for free. But if they want to give you a heart, they have to they have to subscribe. I see. So the content mm -hmm. creator makes money right off the rip if somebody mm -hmm. subscribes. Right. I love that. Right. That's not doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. So okay. you have to find out where your people are. Mm -hmm. Now for those two platforms that are new, mm -hmm. I would say jump on there and become a become an influence on those platforms. Mm -hmm. They're gonna probably grow, but they haven't gotten there yet. So right. you just have to figure out, you know, what platform is best for me. I know we um Facebook is not my platform of choice. Mm -hmm. I always felt like people be stalking me on Facebook. <laughs> and I had someone invite yeah. me to be on their show. And the lady said to me, I'm just going to be honest. I was stalking you. And I was, and my nephew was with me. I was like, oh, my God. Because that's what I always felt like. And she right. said it out of her mouth. And I was like, see? So you just got to know where your people are. Right, right. And, you know, you're all about noise because you're the chief noise, you know, officer. And, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, you basically help business owners get that attention they need in the marketplace. Storytelling, right, is also another way of getting notice, becoming uh, noticed in the marketplace, attracting your, your customers and your, and your marketplace, in, in the marketplace. How important or how much of an impact does telling your story increase to the noise that you're making in the marketplace? It's huge because people remember stories. Mm -hmm. They don't remember sales pictures unless they're really, really funny. Exactly. But they remember stories. I tell a lot of stories on my podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get tired of me telling stories, but they will remember me by the stories I tell. Yeah. And so that's very impactful. What that does is it makes you human to the person that's listening. Right. Right. Because remember, on on audio podcasts, they can't see you. Yeah. So the only thing they have to go on is your story. It's your story. Yeah. So it's really impactful because people will remember that. And guess what they do? If it's a great story, they're gonna mm -hmm. tell. About the story. Yeah, I was listening to this podcast, and now they tell me. Yeah, because consumers don't want anybody to make a sales pitch. Right. They don't, they don't want you to come off all salesy. Right. right. Like you're trying to get their money. Right. You know what they what, what they want is something creative. Mm -hmm. You know. So you got to be even for me. I'm learning how to tell my tell my story more effectively. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come off like I'm making a sales pitch to get your money. Right. You know. So that that storytelling is so important. And I and you know you you work a lot with political. Uh, candidates, and, and I'm always amazed when political candidates can tell a story of how they got to that moment to running for office right. or running for re-election, right? And I see that a lot on the political side. Yeah. On, the, on the business side, I don't see much of that. You know, I see more of the sales pitch. Hey, I have this great service. I have this great product. Buy it. You know, patronize me. You know, so. Um, yeah, do you work with clients on, on helping them craft that storytelling? I do. I mm -hmm. also try to tell them, like, we have a clarity session first. I call it clarity chat. Uh -huh. So we have a clarity chat, and I'll sit down and I'll listen to what they're saying. And then I, and I, and so what normally happens is they will tell me all these things, and I'll come up. It just, so this is a God given gift for me. Mm -hmm. If you sit and talk to me in a clarity chat, by the time you leave, you probably gonna leave with things you haven't even thought of. Right. But that's a gift. Mm -hmm. Right, and I know that's a gift because it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. If somebody came and said, "Well, you know, I got ideas for these shoes," right? right? Why you want to make those shoes? Right. Oh, this is why. I, and then, then the whole thing just. <laughs> right? So I help them come up with a story by asking questions, digging a little bit deeper. Exactly. And by the time they leave, they know, okay, this is my story. Uh -huh. This is why I'm really doing this. Right. You know, and I'm telling them, listen, if you chase the money, bad story. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. If you if you're starting this because you just want to make money, mm -hmm. it's going to flop. Right. It may not flop right away, mm -hmm. but it's going to flop, and you're going to be very unhappy. Yeah. Do something that's really passionate to you. Uh -huh. Exactly. It needs to be something that's going to make you get up every day. Right. When my mom passed last year, she passed on January the fifth at five fifteen. Mm -hmm. It was a Thursday. Mm -hmm. I got up and did my show. Mm -hmm. I was I was horribly, I was miserable. Mm -hmm. But I love what I do so much. I was crying. Mm -hmm. you know, people heard all the emotion. Uh -huh. But I did my show. Yeah. Because she and you seemed real. And it was real. You came across as real and real. authentic. Authentic. Yeah. My mom listens to my show every day. Yeah. So I had to do what I had to do because I know she would have wanted me to do that. Exactly. That's a story. Exactly. That's a real. Because somebody's saying, Audrey, I don't think I can push past that. Mm -hmm. You know. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking I have to. 
Now it took me a minute mm-hmm. to, get, to get myself back together. Right. But I was passionate about what I did, so I did it. Even right, right now, with us talking, I can talk about this all day. Mm-hmm. My my ears itching, y'all. My ears itching because right. my allergies are acting up. <laughs> I just want to scratch my ear, right? Uh. But I love what I do. And so Austin asked me to come on this show. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. I feel like I always have something that somebody, if not everybody, somebody can take away and, and make it work. You know? Right. And I know that we've been, you know, trying to get this together for a long time, for a while, and I definitely wanted you to tell your story on my channel because I, you know, I, I, I found you to be someone of value, and the value proposition that you bring to the small business is your passion, is your innate passion, you know, for marketing and 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 helping entrepreneurs understand why they need to market and how they need to market effectively, yeah. right? So the, the video, the, the 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 video business card, um, we, we, you know, we we find some businesses do like a movie trailer with this with a, with a business card. How how can they add that? How can business owners add that? They they can add it. Here's the thing. So you know, everybody we've been trying to go digital, and people mm-hmm. say stuff like, well, well, scam a card," you know, mm-hmm. or "Let me send you a link." A lot of people get leery about putting their cell phone number. Like yes, that. yes. So yes. I'm one of those people. Like, mm-hmm. if you got my cell phone number, you're, you're special, mm-hmm. right? Because you don't have it. That's the only way. If you got it and, and your number pop up and your name doesn't pop up, right. I'm not answering it. Exactly. Right? So they could be powerful, but a lot of times most people still don't want to give their information out. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of stuff with QR codes, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a QR code right now that I'm going to put on my show. So if people are watching the show on TV, you know, because you know you can watch YouTube on, on TV. Right, exactly. The QR code is right there. Now, I have seen commercials, and this is where I got the idea from. Mm-hmm. I have seen commercials, and I'm like, they have a QR code. And I'm going to take my <laughs> phone out from the bed and scan, and scan it. <laughs> Just to see what pops up because exactly. I'm a marketer. Mm-hmm. And you notice things like that. Mm-hmm. So it could be effective. You know, um, I personally like business cards mm-hmm. because what's going to happen is I'm going to take your business card, I'm going to look at it when I get home, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, oh, okay, okay, if you if I scan something, it's going to go into my, my, my database of people, right. I'm never going to look at it again, right. I'm not going to go look at your website because I'm not going to remember. Right. So you got to think about all of these things. I know it's cute to have digital cards and mm-hmm. all that stuff, mm-hmm. but I tell you, me personally, mm-hmm. If someone said, hey, take my digital card, I'm mm-hmm. going to take it. I'm not going to look at it because I'm going to forget. Right, exactly. If I had, what happens when I go to networking events, mm-hmm. they give me a paper card or mm-hmm. a postcard or something. Every single time, Austin, right. I will go home, I will look at that card, I will look at their mm-hmm. website, and I add them to my database. Mm-hmm. But if you give me the digital card, it's going to go right into my database. Right into the database, yeah. I'm never going to look at it again mm-hmm. unless you call me. Exactly, exactly. It, it, it depends on what's most effective. Right. Right, and what works for you right. as a business owner. Right. right? Now, um, we got a few more questions, so we're going to wrap up. Um, we're enjoying a wonderful conversation with R.G. Bell Kearney. Um, she is with uh, Noise Media Network, and she is here talking to us and having a wonderful discussion about noise, right, in the marketing field. How do we make noise, not just making noise, but making noise at a high level, right, and at a level that's effective to get you the attention that you need in the marketplace, right? So we're going we're gonna to talk about, we're going to shift to talk uh, and talk about budgets, right, because that marketing budget, that plan for spend, spending money, right, how are you going to allocate your, your, your spending items, right, to create your budget, right? Um, that plan for spending money is important, right? As a, as, a, as a business that's launching, meaning that you're early in the, in the small business life cycle, you're spending somewhere about 50, almost 50% of your projected revenues, right, on marketing. An older business now, you've been established for a while, you've been in the marketplace, you might, you might you know, spend a little less but you're still you're still spending uh, money on marketing and and finding out how much noise you need to make to generate that attention in the marketplace. How important is that marketing budget? And what advice do you have to small business owners in, in you know just giving some tidbits on developing a marketing budget? 
a marketing budget is hugely important, but what I will say is that a lot of entrepreneurs starting out, they don't normally have a large budget. No, they right? don't. Sometimes they don't have a budget at all. They don't have a budget at all. Yeah. So what yeah. I will say to you, if you are that person, you say, you know what, I really want to do this business. I don't have a marketing budget. I need to take the money that I do have and invest in their products mm -hmm. that I need to make for the business. Exactly. Yeah. What I will say to you is make friends. What I will say to you is make friends with your lo local media outlet. Uh -huh. Right? Volunteer to write articles mm -hmm. about your thing mm -hmm. in your space. Don't don't write sales pitches, mm -hmm. but volunteer to write articles. Right. That's how I got started in media. I'm mm -hmm. writing articles for a newspaper. Mm -hmm. Then I want your newspaper. You went in and you asked a question. I asked a question. Do you need this? Do you need this? Right. And like absolutely. Absolutely, right. Because any media outlet is always looking for content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you want to write for your local paper, put your byline in there. Mm -hmm. That's free. And all it's going to require you to do is spend some time. Join your local chamber, uh, right? Uh, they have, if, if your chamber is like the chamber that I am a part of, we have a TV network mm -hmm. that you get exposure on. We have mm -hmm. a podcast that you get exposure on. We have a newsletter that goes out weekly, exactly. every Monday. Exactly. You got magazine articles. Mm -hmm. Join your local chamber. Like the yes. article about you. I was at an um, I was at, at a, an a SBDC the other day, and I said to the I said to the council, I was like, "Look, how can I? I need you to get this out to all the SBDCs." He said, mm -hmm. "We can write an article about it." Right. See, we can't sell anything, but we can write our own. Oh, absolutely. Right. So go talk to the SBDC, become a success story for a different organization. Right. These are free. Monetarily, they're free. Mm -hmm. You just gotta invest some time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a local business, mm -hmm. I'm talking about really local, right? Let's say you're a barber or a plumber, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that people can find you, then you need to have a functioning website mm -hmm. that looks decent, professional. Mm -hmm. It does not you need to have Wix in the, in the, in the domain name. Right. Do not have a, a website that has johntheplumber.wix.com. That's a no-no. Mm -hmm. You need to have an email with the same name <coughs> as your domain name, so right. you know you're John the Plumber in Lawrenceville. JohnThePlumber.com and your email should be John at JohnThePlumber.com. Right. It right. should not be John the Plumber at Gmail. Right. I'm just saying. Exactly. Some people will beg to differ. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. So make sure you got a functioning website. Make sure that you create content for that website. Mm -hmm. So you do local SEO. Mm -hmm. That means you learn a little bit about SEO keywords, making sure your citations are together, making sure your address and your telephone number match the address and the telephone number that's on your business profile. Right. Like all of these things, you can learn that on the Google Business. Google exactly. My business. Exactly. That's, that's all free. Right. And not only that, Google has a great business uh, thing called Grow. I think it's Google Grow. Okay. Uh, Google for growth, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Take the classes, they're free. Right. Under Google. Those are free things. Right. Now, when it's time for you to level up, you need a marketing plan. Exactly. Because that marketing plan is going to help you determine your marketing budget. Exactly. You know, so put together your marketing plan so now you know, okay, I know the first month I'm going to have to do all this free stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Because if, a, if someone picks up your story because it's an amazing story and they want to mm -hmm. tell it for you, that can be mass exposure. Exactly. Another thing is collaboration. I remember a long time ago, Austin, this was really long. I was still in Jersey. I interviewed the mompreneurs. Mm. This one, this one, the working from home became like a little right, thing. Right. And there was these two women, they, they, they were called the mompreneurs. Mm -hmm. They had built a brand, their brand was mompreneurs. Had them on the radio show that I was on. Mm -hmm. They came on, but guess what happened? They got to be on the John Walt show, ah, okay. national television. Right. I got a call at seven o'clock that night, like, "Hey, this is the John Walt show call. Uh -huh. We were told that uh, you'd be a good guest to come on. <laughs> Guess what I did? Seven o'clock mm -hmm. next morning, right. I flew over to New York. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, I'm about to be on the John Walt show." Exactly. Now exactly. I wasn't on stage with them, but John show put the camera on me, and asked me questions. Mm -hmm. My people saw me from Maine to Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's that's collaboration. That's collaboration. All exactly. I had to do was pay to pay to get on the train. Go to New York. Mm -hmm. Bought me on Annie's bait, mm -hmm. uh, 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 bagel thingy, mm -hmm. and I was good. That's free. That's free. Right. So PR, that's that's your friend. Exactly. But you need to know who the people are in the community. That's local media, right? Mm -hmm. When I say local media, right. it could be a local newspaper, uh -huh. weekly, a daily a podcast, or a blogger. Right. Don't count those people out. They need content. They're looking for great exactly. stories. You're gonna reach your audience with their audience that you can't reach by yourself. Exactly. And so now you talk, then you get into social media. You know, I would tell anybody, don't try to do all the platforms at once. There's mm -hmm. too many, mm -hmm. and they're constantly adding. Right. Pick the platform that best benefit, best benefit you at that at, time. At that time, yes. and then focus on that. 
You know, you may have to master it yourself. If you say, you know what, I don't want to learn Facebook, then hire somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hire yes. a Facebook marketer. Yes. If you know that Instagram is your thing, but you just don't want to do it, then hire an Instagram marketer. Exactly. They're there for you. Exactly. They're there. So pick, pick the platform. Don't try to do them all at once. You know, pick them one at a time. Maybe say, you know, this quarter I'm focusing just on Facebook. Exactly. This quarter I'm going to focus on YouTube. This quarter I'm going to focus on Instagram. You know, just break it up. Because that way you're not overwhelmed. And if you do decide to do them all at once, if you got a budget. Right. Put a put a put a social media person on each one of them. You got yes. one person that handles just Instagram. That's all they paid to do. Right. And now you got your now you got this whole thing that's running. All the wheels and all the spokes and wheels are moving together. Exactly, exactly. And that's important to mention because all of that requires budgeting. Yes. And if you are uh, doing your due diligence in the beginning, like say for instance, if you're a pre-startup, and this is before you launch, you are doing your business plan, you are writing your business plan, or you're having a professional consultant write the business plan for you and do all the research. One key component, one main component of that business plan is what? The marketing plan. The marketing plan, right? Now, if you're an established business, you've already had your business plan done, now you're looking to scale, you're looking to expand, you're adding streams, you're adding services and products, you want to just, Determine, you know, what, what's the SWOT analysis on that product? You know, the strengths, how strong is that product and service? What is its weakness, opportunities and threats? You may want to now have just a marketing plan done or a marketing analysis done to determine the feasibility of that product or service being successful in the marketplace. You can just, you know, elect to just do the marketing plan. And this is where you reach out to someone like Audrey and you have her help you and assist you in creating more noise in the marketplace and getting more attention to your company, your product, or your service. Because these things are very important, you know. And Audrey, I want people to reach out to you. I want folks to contact you because you have a wealth of knowledge. You are a repository of marketing information. I want folks to reach out to you and contact you. Just let them know how they can reach you. Sure, you can reach me by uh, emailing me, Audrey at noisemedia.us. That's Audrey at noisemedia.us. Audrey at noisemedia.us. Or just go to the website, noisemedia.us. Or you can uh, call me, 678-809-0344. 678-809-0344. Right, what social media handles do you use? Noise Media. It's uh, LinkedIn. If you go to uh, Facebook, it's Noise Media Network. Instagram, Noise Media Network. All right, great. Thank you so much. And, you know, uh, I hope you all found this discussion valuable. We, we try to bring these interviews to you in a discussion format, relaxed, and presenting the information you need in order to take that information now and act on it, right? We don't want you to just watch the video and just move on. No, we want you to watch the video, extract the nuggets that, that are being presented on the video, and then act on them because we want those nuggets to be used as you know, advice, you know, advice to you, the, the business owner and the entrepreneur, all right, to go out and, and improve on your business and to, you know, devise a better marketing plan for yourselves. My name is Austin Thompson with Thompson Management Consulting, and this is the Unlocation Spotlight Entrepreneur Series. I am here with Audrey Bell Kearney of Noise Media. She is the Chief Noise officer <laughs> for noise media and she will help you create the noise you need to attract the attention that you are looking for and that you expect to your business so we want to thank Audrey Bell Kearney for being here with us today and we thank you for tuning in uh, this is the the second series this is the second edition of our marketing series we had a previous uh, video on the actual uh, statics, the, the, the statistics and the data and so on and so forth and today we're talking about how you make noise, how you get that attention that you need in order to grow your business successfully. Thank you so much and we'll be back at you with another episode. Have a great day. Bye everybody.